chemistry students and welcome to your second video in the chapter 8 series. Tonight we will be looking at how to balance the chemical equations that you wrote last class. So as we look at balancing chemical reactions, the first thing you're going to do is write a correct formula equation. So we had lots of practice with doing that last class. Always make sure you check your charges crisscross when necessary. Well, what we found out when we did that is that it seemed like we lost O's or we lost N's or we lost some element when we went from one side to the other. We weren't sure why the numbers didn't quite equal up. Well, that's because we have yet to balance it. Remember, we're just making formulas based on the word equation that they gave us. All we're doing is writing um, the formulas. We're taking those charges, crisscrossing them when needed, and we're writing a formula. We have to balance it now according to the law of conservation of mass. And the way we do that is by adding coefficients. So coefficients are those whole numbers in front of a formula. So they're going to be big numbers. We're going to put them right at the front. Um, they do not ever go in between the formula. Once you write the formula, however it is, it has to stay. So we're not going to change it. So your coefficients then we're going to put in front. And by putting those in front, we're going to start balancing out all those things that didn't look quite right when you wrote your formula equation. Again, remember to never change your subscripts once you write the formula it's stuck. Those little numbers that you wrote, they cannot be changed. And when you get done, you should have the same number of each element on both sides of the reaction. What that means is before the arrow, if you counted up all the different elements, and after the arrow, arrow you counted up all of those elements, you would see that they would be exactly the same amount. So just a few guidelines for balancing equations. First one is you want to balance different atoms one at a time. If you start trying to do too many at once, you're going to get lost in your equation. So just look at one element at a time. Try to balance it. Does it mean you may have to go back? Yes. But start with one and go from there. Then you're going to balance atoms that appear only once on each side first. Some compounds may have the same elements in them. So as we're looking at these, we want to look for things that only appear on each side first. Then we have those polyatomic ions. Those are the ones you usually put in parentheses. These are ones you want to balance it as a single unit. So don't break them up. Don't like nitrate, which is NO3. Keep it as NO3. Don't break it up into nitrogen and oxygen. And finally, you want to kind of balance O and H last. These are some of the most common elements you'll see, and they're in a bunch of different compounds, so we usually balance O and H last because often they will end up balancing out themselves. And then once you have a good formula, you've got everything balanced, always make sure it's in simplest form. So reduce your coefficients if you can, because as you're going through, going, moving back and forth, you may end up getting some larger numbers. Well, if you look at it, they may all be divisible by two. If they are, then you're just going to reduce them all. So let's look at some examples. For our first one, we have magnesium and hydrochloric acid, which produce magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. So first thing we need to do is write a good formula. So I've got magnesium reacting with hydrochloric acid, and that's going to produce magnesium chloride. I get the two because magnesium is plus two, chlorine is minus one, so I crisscrossed. And hydrogen gas. Hydrogen is a Hofbrinkle element, so we need to make sure we have the two because it's by itself. And then we've been told that's a gas, so just to have a nice complete equation, we should add that it is a gas. So now, if we start looking at this, all of a sudden, it looks like we ended up with extra hydrogens and extra chlorines. So we want to go through and we want to balance this. So starting with Mg, we see we have one Mg over here, and I have one Mg over here. So they're balanced. I'm not going to do anything to them. Then I said save H for last. 
So we'll go to chlorine. Here I have one chlorine, but here I have two chlorines. So what I need to do is add a coefficient to make this two chlorines. Because just like our subscripts, when they would kind of distribute through to anything that was in parentheses, coefficients also distribute through to both of the elements. So now I have two chlorines and I have two chlorines. So now I'm going to go back. I've added the two so that affected my H. So I have two H's on this side and I already have two H's on this side so this reaction would be balanced. Let's try another. So aluminum carbide Aluminum is positive 3, carbide is negative 4, so we are going to have to crisscross. So I have Al4C3. I'm going to add that to water, and it's going to produce some methane gas. So CH4, I know it's a gas. And solid aluminum hydroxide. Alumina again is positive 3. Hydroxide is negative 1. So we're going to be doing some crisscrossing. So I'll have Al. Make sure OH goes in parentheses with the 3 on the outside. So now if you had put this or written this without the parentheses, the 3 would only belong to the H. And you're going to find that this is going to get really hard to balance. So it's going to be really important that you have the proper formulas when we go to balance. First thing you want to look at is ALs. Let's start with AL. I have four over here. I only have one. So what do I do? I put a coefficient in. So now I have four ALs. I have three C's. I only have one C. So I'm going to add a three to make three C's. Now this has affected the other elements in their compounds. So here, I'm going to take 3 times 4. So I'm going to end up with 12 hydrogens. In this case, I'm going to again take 4 times 3. And I'm going to end up with 12 OHs. Now again, we're going to talk about keeping OH together as a group. However, you look at the first side and you're like, but I don't have OH. I have H's and O's. Wouldn't it be better to say I have 24 hydrogens and 12 oxygens? Eh, we could. But there's a nice trick with, or with water. Water is actually made up of hydrogen and oxygen. But we're going to do it as hydrogen and hydroxide. Because you can have the positive H and the negative OH, and it really doesn't change it. You still have two H's and one O. And that's going to help us then balance. So I have 12 H's over here. I want 12 H's over here. So I'm going to put a 12 in front of there. That then also gives me 12 OH's, and I have 12 OH's over here. So although it looks different, sometimes it helps to break apart uh, water into H and OH, especially if we have this OH group here, or the hydroxide. Last practice, we've got aqueous nitric acid. So I have HNO3, which we know as aqueous. It's going to react with magnesium hydroxide, which turns out to be MgOH2. Magnesium is a plus 2 hydroxide, negative 1, so we crisscrossed. This produces, oops, forgot the solid. So this produces aqueous magnesium nitrate. Again, magnesium plus two, nitrate minus one. So I have to make sure my nitrate goes in parentheses with a two on the outside and water. Again, we'll notice I have an OH in here. So maybe I want to think of this water as HOH just for balancing purposes, to kind of help me out. We're not going to start with H, because I usually say end with H's. So let's start with our NO3 group. I have one NO3 group, again, keeping it as a unit. So one NO3, I have two NO3s over here, so I'm going to put a two in front of this first group. 
go on to my MGs, I have one MG, one MG. So that is balanced. So now I can come back and look at my other groups that I have. So here I have two OHs. Over here I only have one, so I'm going to put a two in front of there. That gives me two H's, and luckily I have two H's over here.